me write this down so I'm with you. So July 2015, did you say? Uh, um, 15th of July. Yeah, July 15th. 2013. 2013, yeah, okay. And it's the top of page uh, 22. Um, it um, it says in the middle column it's, it's the box at the top of the page did you get the point the middle column says appointed over his domestics and then the text is very brief it says in 1919 Jesus selected capable anointed brothers to be his faithful and discreet slave and you know, I was kind of thrown by that, although I found your book and your website quite incredible. I think the website is amazing with the the number of videos and the number of links you've got on it. A uh, tremendous amount of work's gone into it. And I, I think that the work that's gone into your, your book is um, remarkable, very highly commendable. It's just some of the claims in the book that I have difficulty with. And this is this is one. Could you prove okay. that in 1919, Jesus selected capable anointed brothers, that's a plural, not a singular, to be his faithful and discreet slave? Not from the Bible, not, not 1919, no, because it's not a reference that we would point to in the Bible because it doesn't record that in the scriptures. So the answer is no. However, yes, in the sense that you would have to build up a context and a picture of how we got to 1919. So if you want me to show you in the Bible where it says 1919, Jesus appointed the faithful and discreet slave, no, the answer's no. That wouldn't be in the scriptures specifically. Does that help? Um, well, I know 1919 is not mentioned in the scriptures. Um, yeah. Are you aware so, that in 1919, the Watchtower Society taught that Pastor Russell alone was the faithful and discreet slave? Yeah. And he is not the faithful and discreet slave. So we don't we don't believe he is that, although no, we may no, well have felt that in the past. No, no, I'm talking about 1919, not today. Yeah. In 1919, the Watchtower taught that Pastor Russell alone was the faithful and discreet slave. Um, that's taught in the first edition of the Finnish Mystery, published in 1917 on page 5. It was yeah. removed from later editions, and I've got because um, I'm a I'm a real scanner. I'm one of those people who loves to scan things. I've got a Watchtower from 1920 here, first of April 1920, page 101. This is an example of many Watchtowers I could quote. It says that Pastor Russell is the faithful and discreet slave, and it calls it present truth. Um, yeah. So, watched our 1st of April, 1920, page 101, quote, No one in present truth for a moment doubts that Brother Russell filled the office of the faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. So, they taught at the time that Pastor Russell alone was the faithful and discreet slave, not a corporate body of brothers, not a governing body. The governing body came into existence as a corporate entity, um, having um, taken power away from the president, Nathan Homer Orr, to my knowledge, that happened in 1971. Yeah, so, so all what you're saying is correct. That is in there. There's no dispute about that. So the, the Watchtower has it understood it back then, or the very pu various publications that were written uh, did state those things. So that was what various ones believed at the time so that's correct um so wouldn't your watchtower from 2013 be somewhat inaccurate because it seems to give the impression in that watchtower unless of course i've got it wrong which i i i might have it seems to yeah. give the impression that there was a governing body running jehovah's witnesses a corporate body of several plural elders who were the governing yeah. body running the Watchtower Society in 1919. There was no governing body till 1971. Um, let me just read the left left hand side of that. Sorry, you were going to say something, sorry. No, that's no, fine, carry on. 
Um, that Watchtower, 15th of July, 2013, page 22, says the faithful and discreet slave, a small group of anointed brothers who are directly involved in preparing and dispensing spiritual food during Christ's presence. Today, these anointed brothers make up the governing body. And then the middle column, in 1919, Jesus selected capable anointed brothers to be his faithful and discreet slave. Well, that's implying that the governing body was was appointed in 1919, and it wasn't. The governing body started in 1971. Just let me get, so I've just got the watch there. So what yep. paragraph are we on there then? Is it a paragraph? Um, yep, yeah, this is um, the, the watch tower, 15th of July. It's page 22, yeah. and it's yeah. a box at the top of the page. Did you get the point? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. sure. I'm actually working from scans rather than going to the website. Right. Yeah. Okay, got that. So, okay, let me just have a look at that. Then. So, the faithful and discreet slave, a small group of anointed brothers who are directly involved in preparing and dispensing spiritual food today during Christ's presence. Today, these anointed brothers make up the governing body. So, the term governing body and the term faithful and discreet slave. So, the term governing body is not a scriptural. Um, how can I put it? It's not a scriptural term, but the faithful and discreet slave is a scriptural term. So the faithful and discreet slave in 1919 began to dispense spiritual food, but it wasn't called the governing body so much in that time. Does that help? No. So, who, who were the faithful and discreet slave in 1919? Well, well it could be one person only. Or it could be two, or it could be three, or it could be four, or it could be five. There's no, um, there's no definite number. Um, so in 1919, obviously you know a bit of the history. During mm -hmm. 1918, certain brothers were put in prison. The organisation seemed to be finished. Um, some of that was to do with certain books they wrote about... Uh, uh, the Canadian authorities were very, very against us back then, and so were the American ones. So they were put into prison. So Brother Rutherford and there were select other brothers who were uh, incarcerated for some months. They were released um, in 1918, 1919, and that's when we believe, because of that, the beginnings then of a structure to have a we, we call the term today governing body, but certainly the scriptural entity, faith and discreet slave, began. So although the term, the date 1919 is not in the Bible, and it's not something you could show in the Bible, because of events that happened mm -hmm. uh, with Brother uh, Rutherford and, of course, other brothers around him, we believe they obviously began the preaching work as we, we know it today. They... Uh, arranged various conventions, they began to get the ministry organised and a structure began to be formed of what we mo modern day call Jehovah's Witnesses, obviously it was Bible students back then. So that's why we feel it was 1919. Prior to that, Brother Russell um, obviously... <sighs> Well, does that answer your question? I don't know if that, that helps without me going into um, anything. Not, not really. Can you name okay. anyone else, say, the year 1929 and before, can you name in Watchtower literature anyone who was called a faithful and discreet slave or a part of the faithful and discreet slave before I 1929? Don't, I don't... Yeah, I mean, if you give me a minute, I can go into the Proclaimers book. I mean, if you go on to... Um, it, it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It doesn't um, say that anyone else was called the faithful and discreet slave. Other than... Oh. Yeah, there, there is no Watchtower literature. And that is, a, that is not a primary source. That's a secondary source. Yeah. Well, you know, if you want to see a photograph, for instance, of Brother Noor and other brothers... You know, you can see that, Brother Rutherford as well, where there's other brothers around him. Brother Covington comes to mind. Um, I'd have to look it up now, I could find that within a few minutes. I think, Robert, the situation with this is that Jesus Christ uses a faithful slave. Um, just after 1914 was the beginning 
of the last days. So well, you need to prove all this. It's no good just saying it. It's, yeah, it's going to go in one ear and out the other. I'm commanded by the Bible to ignore everything you say unless you can prove right. it from Scripture. If, so if, if, if someone thing. comes up to you and says, Joseph Smith is a prophet of God, yeah. and you're doomed if you don't go to the Mormon church and wear sacred underwear with square and compass on it and go do your temple duties in the temple and pay your tithe and you, you become a Latter-day Saint and you go door to door um, giving away copies of the Book of Mormon. The Bible says you are to ask the person, where is that in Scripture? If it's not in Scripture, okay. you can ignore it. You're under, you're under okay. no obligation to follow someone's idea. No, we wouldn't want somebody following my idea or anybody's idea. And yeah. uh, as we've, as we've um, grown to be more mature, I think that's a, probably a good way of putting it, spiritually, we've grasped that we need to do things better, improve, that's why, you know, in the 70s, we now have a governing body, as we term it, because we have, um, you know, 10, 11, 12, depends, it can go down to seven or eight, various brothers who serve on a governing body. In the past, it was more centralised around one or two or three people. Um, I suppose a scriptural precedent for that would be toward the end of the first century, um, John the Apostle, mm -hmm. he seemed to survive um, longer than everybody else, and the Bible called him a restraint until the man of lawlessness came. Which I think oh, where does the Bible slow. call John the restraint until well, the man of mention, lawlessness it, came? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It mentions the man of lawlessness. It doesn't mention John as being the one who's the one who's restrained. But when you read, but the you've God just said he was. But you've just said yes, he was. That's what, that's what we think. Yeah. But Which scripture says that. that? Yeah, so let me, do you want me to look that up there? Uh, yeah, if you can, well, only if you can find a scripture that, that says that. So, yeah, so all I'm trying yeah. to say is that um, if you look at the beginning of the, not the beginning of the uh, first century, but to after Jesus' death, you had yeah. a collection of men, so elders, apostles, yeah. and they served as what we would use the term governing body. But obviously, as you got toward the end of that, that century, um, the Apostle John, he obviously wrote the Revelation, so he seemed to live right to the end of that uh, century. Um, probably uh, most of the other Apostles had already died. So because he was able to um, write the Revelation, you could say there was only one person left, possibly. And he used the word possibly. So then what I'm starting to say is, Robert, the number of people who make up the faith and discreet slave isn't so much the issue because John himself was the only apostle and only one used to transmit the revelation to us. So if in the early, you know, 1990s and early 20s there were a few, it's not the number, it's what they did. And there'll only be a few anyway of the faith and discreet slave. There can only be a few. You're not going to have 100 or 200 because it's a group that looks after the vast majority. Um, so you're right to point out that the, the the writings that were written back in those times was incorrect. If that's if that's helpful. So Brother Russell was not the faithful discreet slave. What the brothers wrote at that time was not correct. So, so why should I help? believe any of it? If you admit that what they wrote for decades was incorrect. Why should I believe any of it now if it's been incorrect in the past? Maybe in 50 years time, Jehovah's Witnesses will say that everything you write today, including this book, Enjoy Life Forever, that's been abandoned. You know, yeah. um, well, no, no, in, in, that, no, well. in that watchtower that I read to you from 1920, or was it 21? I forget, yeah. I forget the reference. It's, it said, nobody in present truth. The word yeah. present truth means that what they call the truth will not be the truth in, uh, you know, a, a couple of decades time. They will abandon yeah. beliefs and they'll have new truth. Yeah, so what always is the case is the Bible is truth. Jehovah's Witnesses have made lots of mistakes, particularly in terms of prophecy. 
or lots of misunderstandings, however you want to term it. Right. So your question is a very good one because you're obviously a very insightful person who likes to check, and that's a good thing to do. Right. right. Um, it, it is actually nice to meet somebody who thinks, right, I'm going to get hold of this subject and I'm going to look it up, and you know, yeah. and that, that to me, I, I find that a, a good quality to have. When you ask why should I believe it, again, that's a very good question. Um, I think it's John 13, Jesus talks about you'll recognise them by their fruits. I think if you, you know... John, John 13, 34 and 35, everybody uses that verse. Yeah. So, so the Christadelphians so, will say, only we have love. Yeah. Only, uh, uh, look, I'll read it. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As yeah. I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will yeah. know that you are my disciples, if you have lo love one for another. So the Christadelphians say, we're the only ones with this love. All the groups down the road, Baptists, Methodists, Anglicans, Mormon, Jehovah's Witnesses, they've got no love. Yeah. When, you go to the, to the, when, when you go to the Mormons, they quote this verse to you. Who is the only group in the world with love? It's obviously us. It's the Mormons. No one else has got love. All the other groups down the road... Seventh-day Adventists, Baptists, Pentecostal, Catholic, Jehovah's Witnesses, they've got no love. Until you go to the Seventh-day Adventists, and they say, there's this verse in the Bible that says you'll recognise them by the love they have one for another. We're the only ones with love. John, John 13, 34 and 35, it's Seventh-day Adventism. We're the ones who love. And everybody else, every other building down the road, they've got no love. So everyone's using this verse to say it's them. It's, it's just... It's not a very strong argument. Well, first of all, first of all, if yeah, it's not the case. Jehovah's Witnesses are the only ones who have loved us. No, that no, no, no. no you, you've missed my point. No, no, you've missed my point entirely. Okay. Many religious groups say that this verse, John thirteen thirty four and thirty five, you'll know them by the love they have. They yeah. say that applies to them and them only. They're the only ones with love. According okay. to the Seventh-day Adventist, it's them. It's the Seventh-day Adventist. According to the Mormons, it's them. It's the Mormons. Right. I used to be a oneness Pentecostal. According to the oneness Pentecostals, the only people with love are other oneness Pentecostals. So lots of groups okay. are using this verse and saying this is applicable to us. And it's nonsense because you can't have okay. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of religious groups that say that this verse is exclusively talking about them when hundreds of other groups are making exactly the same argument to their followers. So what you've got to do as the one who's obviously assessing the situation is to try to discern whether any of them are speaking the truth or not. That's what you've yeah. got to do. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously, as being somebody who wants to be informed, that's this you can make. If you look at Matthew 7, verse 16, that's kind of, it's a similar, it's a similar point. It's slightly different wording. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know what translation you've got, but it basically says here, by their fruits you will recognise them. But the, 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 yeah. context, the context is not good people. The context mm -hmm. in verse 15 is false prophets. Uh, yes. Matthew seven fifteen: beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's, sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You will know them, that's the false prophets, by their fruits. Do men gather yeah. grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So it's not talking about the good people. It's, it's talking about we'll know them by their fruits. Yeah. We'll know the bad people by their fruits. Yeah, this is the point I'm trying to make. Right. So the, the, exactly the point I'm trying to make. So by their fruits, you recognise them. Ne never do people gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles, do they? Likewise, every good tree produces fine fruit but every rotten tree produces worthless fruit. Mm -hmm. A tree cannot produce, a, a tree cannot bear worthless fruit, nor can a rotten tree produce fine fruit. So, and then in verse 20, really then by their fruits you'll recognise them, uh, those men. So, um, going back to your original point, um, the manifestation of what people do in their lives is the real determining factor for somebody like yourself and somebody like me, as to whether a religious group has anything um, about them. No, now, no, no, absolutely not. The context in Matthew 7 is individuals. If, well, if you, it's, it's not talking this about religious saying. groups, it's talking about individuals in Matthew seven twenty-one to 23. So if so you... 
if you meet a person who demonstrates real Christian love and real genuine kindness, right, that doesn't mean that that person's religion is true. That person might be a very loving, kind person. Yeah. But if they're a member yeah. of the Mormon church, you can't say, therefore, yeah. the Mormon church is true because this person is a very loving person. Lots of people can be very nice when you meet them, first of all. Yeah. When I yeah. became a oneness Pentecostal and I was love bombed, I was shown lots of love and acceptance yeah. uh, at the start. Um, that kind of dried up pretty quickly when I started asking questions about the group and questions about oneness yeah. Pentecostalism. Um, so the context so there is, is that you, you know that individuals, you, you will know individual people by their fruits. You can't yeah. you you can't make this equivalent to the person's religious organization. You can't say here's a loving person. He is such a kind hearted, loving person. Uh, he's actually a Scientologist. Oh, well, Scientology must be true because he's a loving person, at least at the start when he's love bombing you. He's he is a loving, kind person. Um, Can we just get 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 back to your book enjoy yeah. life forever yeah. um there's a different just issue let me finish on this point about oh, fruits sure. though Rob. sure the fruits is you know the fruits is the whole person the whole person it's what the person believes what they do basically as a christian it's their faith and their willingness to follow what jesus teaches as a christian so it's the entire scriptural beliefs that jesus taught so love absolutely is a facet but obedience also is a facet sacrifice is also a facet of those fruit of those fruits so it's not just a question of love it's a question of obedience it's a question of submission to the sovereignty that the bible expresses it's a question to following jesus command so if a person um, for instance, is faced with a, I don't know, a political issue. That person, does he submit to going to war or does he, you know, refuse to do it? Now, there's no sort of love, people putting their arms around each other and say, oh, I love you. Doc. It's a question of that person could be put into prison or even executed because they will not support the war effort of a particular country. They're the kind of fruits as well that I'm referring to, where a person will say, no, I will not kill somebody else in the name of this particular country or cause. OK, so when you start to widen this concept out about fruits, being obedience, being a willingness to do God's will, not just showing a love bomb, as you put it, then it, it does begin to make a lot more sense. Now, if a lot... I, I, I can't follow multiple points. You need to make one point to me, and then I respond the to that one point. It. If you make multiple points, you, you're you just going to okay. lose me, because I'm, I'm I'm thinking point three, point four, point five. Right. I, I don't know what right. your right. earlier points are. My mind apologies just goes completely blank. For that. Yeah, apologies uh, for that. No, that's the all right. The point is, the fruits are more than just showing love. I think it's you said obedience. something about obedience to Christ. The fruits are obedience to Christ and obedience to the Bible. That's I think part you said. of it. That, that's a part of it, yeah. Yeah. And then you, I think you went on and you said that it's having nothing to do with warfare would be one example of that. One example, yeah. Right. Um, well, I certainly would agree in many cases individuals not getting involved in warfare would be an example of that. Um, I don't wish to go into the other side. There might be instances when to protect women and children, for instance, men might wish to pick up a gun or a sword and fight to protect women and children. If bad people are going to try and hurt them or, or do wicked, bad things to women and children. Um, so that's one thing. It, it's, it's a personal approval or disapproval of individuals. It's got nothing to do with organisations. You can't say if uh, Friar so-and-so, who's a Roman Catholic, doesn't want to fight in a war therefore the entire Roman Catholic Church is correct because of friar so-and-so not wanting to fight in a war um, the yeah, other, yeah the other thing that worries me is the Jehovah's Witness organization the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York for instance has had very definite involvement in warfare so I'm not talking about individual Jehovah's Witnesses 
such as in South Korea or Russia, who I know have gone to prison for not joining the military. I'm talking about the Watchtower organization, which is, has been over the decades heavily involved in politics and warfare. But perhaps that's a different issue. Yeah, you can go whichever way you want. I'm happy to, 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 to listen and respond whatever issues. I mean, I, I obviously hear these things a lot. I do a lot of research myself. Um, I had somebody who, for instance, talked about some kind of Henrietta fund that exists because the Watchtower Society are the beneficiaries. And some of those particular stocks or shares or investment are involved in certain parts of the economy that we wouldn't normally be involved in. So there's all there's all these kind of things that are circulating all the time. Um, you know. Ha have you actually checked up the Henry have you checked up the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust? You can find about yeah, you can find out about yeah. them on the IRS, uh, the Internal uh, Revenue uh, Service, yeah. the American yeah, Tax I'm Authorities. Aware. Yeah, I'm aware of all that. So So you, you know, are aware she was a woman who died in nineteen forty five and the sole beneficiary of the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. It's not owned by the Watchtower. It's an independent trust run, run by the Commercia Bank of Detroit. The Henrietta M. Riley Trust, the sole beneficiary every year since 1945. I've got the tax records until about 2017, so I'm not too sure after 2017. But the sole beneficiary is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. They get about, yeah. I think the last time I heard it, it was about $600,000 a year. Yeah, I don't know how much, but yeah. Some well, of the, some well of them, if you, you say you don't know how much, if, you, if you've checked this up and you've gone to the IRS I, tax authorities. I do know how much. Yeah. The thing is, you look these things up and you get it logged in there. But then after a while, there are other things that come up and you're dealing with. It's not something I check regularly. So I, I, I'm not going to say that I know all the figures when I would have done in the past, but I don't today because I can't remember every figure. But yes. I'm aware of that. I've looked that up. The, so. the, the, the um, share dividends are from a whole range of a whole portfolio of companies. Yep. Um, Northrop Grumman, for instance, which makes the B-2 bomber and Lockheed yep. Martin which makes the HIMARS missile system, which the Ukrainians are using in Ukraine against the Russians yeah. at the moment. Uh, other companies that make um, military equipment, such as Honeywell International and General Dynamics. Um, there's even a company that makes soft pornography. And um, the Henrietta Raleigh Trust has, has shares in that. The Watchtower could turn the money down but to my knowledge, every year up to 2017, I don't have the tax records after that date. They always accept the money, knowing that some of the share dividends are from military companies. Yeah. Um, ten years ago, they even had shares in Morris, which is a tobacco company. Well, individual yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to smoke. They get disfellowshipped if they're caught smoking. But the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York is happy to receive share dividends. Not now because Henrietta and Riley Trust sold the shares. Um, but years ago, they, um, they, they had shares in Morris, a tobacco company, and the Watchtower received the dividends from that. I mean, to me, this seems rather hypocritical, because if you are a religion that's against warfare and politics, then you shouldn't get involved in politics, and the, war and the Watchtower's heavily involved in politics. And you shouldn't get involved in the military. And the Watchtower has been involved in the military for over a century. Yeah, so here's, here's one of the subjects which I come across quite a lot, this kind of thing that you're mentioning. Uh, um, and there's lots of other things. Yeah. So what a person has to do is they have to look into these things if they choose to do so and make a decision. The first thing to say, Robert, is that mm -hmm. if you believe everything you looked up on the internet and accepted it as face value. Well, I went to the uh, IRS, Internal Revenue know, Service. Yeah, I know. The but American tax authorities. I don't think they're going to be telling lies. But what I'm trying to say to you is beneficiaries, somebody who's a beneficiary doesn't have a choice that they're necessarily the beneficiary at the inception of a trust. So the fact that somebody... I mean, I could choose you to be a beneficiary if I wanted to. I could choose anybody. 
Um, yeah, so I don't have to accept the money if it's dirty money. You don't have to accept the money. Yeah, yeah if, it's, if, it's, if it's if 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 her drugs lord, who traffics children yeah. for money around the world, wants to set up a trust paying me six hundred thousand dollars a year. Yes. I can either turn that money down, or yeah. I can accept the money if I'm a greedy so and so, or I yeah. could say I'm going to donate this money. And sign a bit of paper, sign a waiver, and give the money every year to um, uh, a charity that protects children who are trafficked. I don't have to accept it, and the watchdog so, doesn't have to accept it, but it does. So what you've got to do then, you've got to, um, if if that's something important to you to find out what's happening, you've got to actually be able to um, discern what's in the fund, what is received. But I've just told you. What. What is, re what is received by the Watchtower, in what way it's received, and to what degree, what else is in that fund. So you, you've got to make your own decision. If that's something that you conclude is an absolute, that can't be right, Jehovah's Witnesses must not accept that, and that it precludes them, then that, that's, that's absolutely fine for you to do so. I personally don't view it in the way that it's portrayed. And that's the difference between the two of us. Let me, so, let, me let me give you an example. Let me give you an illustration. Let me give you an illustration to, to show one. This is not to do with the Henrietta Fund. This is just a point, a wider point. If a guy works in a tobacco factory and his wages come from that source, he may also have his own personal share scheme in that company. And he, he's, his wages come from that. He also gets some share dividends, which converted into cash. If he then comes along and goes to the bottom of our web page and he donates £10, £20 to our organisation, some people could say, well, that one is coming directly from tobacco. No, it's not. It's coming from somebody who is an individual who's choosing to give you of his money. Yeah, you see that distinction then, don't you? Um, I see that distinction. Yeah. However, what I'm saying is some other people would say, well, hang on a minute. That entire money that he's getting... Is based on the fact that he goes to a tobacco factory and does employment for them. So what I'm trying to say is there will be all kinds of donations that the, the brothers get. Some they do not accept. I know that. Could you give but an example of that? Could you give me an example of a donation not, they have not accepted? Yeah, I can talk about some people who donate and no, who have died. No, 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 don't talk about some people. Give me a precise, exact reference of a donation that the Watchtower has not accepted. Give me the evidence. Well, I don't have... I can only tell you my experiences, so I could, if I could share that with you. So sometimes individuals uh, will donate what they have when they die, and the family will contest that. And sometimes they do. They feel the person has been brainwashed or whatever. We're not allowing that money to go to there. And I have known... And this is something I'm trying to sort of explain to you. I, I don't think you need to explain this to me. I, I think I understand this, okay, this well, perfectly. Fine. Honestly, I, I really so think... I honestly think I understand this, this perfectly. Can I give you an example of what happened on the BBC News just over ten years ago? Are we referring to Panorama? No, the BBC News, I said. Oh, well, Panorama is BBC News, but... Um, this, Panorama is not the BBC News. Panorama is a documentary produced by the BBC. I'm talking about the yes, BBC it's... News of just over ten years ago. I can't. I can't say I know until you tell me what it is. Right. Well, fine. Um, ten years ago, just over ten years ago, BBC and ITV News had a leading article about hypocrisy by the Roman Catholic Church and the Anglican Church. Now, apparently, they have huge. Um, um, pen, pen, pension plans for their their clergy. The Anglican Church had invested heavily in a whole range of mostly British companies, but especially um, they had invested in British armaments companies. The Roman Catholic Church had invested the um, share fund money for their clergy in a whole host of European companies, but especially some Italian companies that make military equipment. Now, it was over 10 years ago. I can't name the actual companies. And this was talked about in the news. And they said what utter hypocrites the Anglicans and the Catholics were. 
deliberately investing pension money in companies that uh, produce armaments of war and making making profits from wars. Now, I, I agree with that. I think it was utter hypocrisy. And apparently, very shortly after that, the pension funds for both the Anglican and the Catholic Church sold um, certain shares that were to do with military, the, the military and, and armaments because of the bad publicity that they received on the news, not just on the BBC, but across Europe and across the world, exposing their utter hypocrisy. Now, all that the Catholic Church and the Anglican Church is doing, they're doing exactly the same as the Jehovah's Witnesses. In fact, I'd say the Jehovah's Witnesses are far worse because Anglicans and Catholics don't claim to be neutral in warfare. Jehovah's Witnesses do. But all three of them collect money from arms companies knowingly and willingly. So uh, well, who's, can, who's, can who's we, the worst? Um, can we log back in? Because we've got one minute. I'm, I'm yep. on the free suit. Yep, sure. Just, let's log back in. Yep. Let me just thingy this and I'll, I'll see you on the other side. Yep, we'll do. To you. Thank okay. you. Uh, that's all right. That's fine.